Good afternoon. Greetings to all the friends from all over the world, people of goodwill, volunteers, and people from different parts of the globe who in different corners of this globe work for others, for the sick, hungry, injured by wars, and landmine victims. I warmly greet the UN representatives, goodwill ambassadors, advocates supporting humanitarian action, as well as the numerous organizations with UN consultative status. Just today ended a multi-day NGO CSW forum assisting the 67th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. Thank you to everyone who contributed to such a great and much-needed event. Thank you very much for that. Many of you know me already, but I will introduce myself to people who have not met me yet. My name is Angelika Jarosławska-Sapiecha. I'm International Peace Ambassador, initiator of One Mind, One Life campaign and movement for a mind-free world, humanitarian and patron of many humanitarian and mining organizations. For many years I have been supporting humanitarian actions that reaches remote corners of the globe, such as Cambodia, Vietnam, African countries and Ukraine. In many of these places, I have friends and people I work with directly. Last year alone, we sent over 6,000 tons of humanitarian aid to Ukraine through the Polish Peace Corps. We also supported Ukraine in humanitarian terms in the last years, when we organized transport primarily to the hospitals in the area of ongoing war. For many years, we have been informing the world that there is a war, not a conflict, beyond our borders. This is how, together with organizations from Ukraine, we shouted about the war that has been going on since 2014. I also met with the children and families of the victims of war in Ukraine. For the very beginning, I fought against Russian propaganda that wanted to destroy me and my organization destroy activities that are aimed at helping those who are most in need, but also defeating children and civilians in Ukraine. This is a part of being humanitarian. As I learned from the other humanitarians, an unavoidable part. We both cars that travel from Poland to Ukraine several times a month with humanitarian aid, especially food and life-saving equipment. This is why I would like to thank the drivers, volunteers and donors who are so willing to help Ukrainians selflessly. Dear people from Poland, selflessly welcomed Ukrainians. People who fled the hell of war received shelter and food during such a difficult time for them. Polish people, not politicians, were the first to extend a helping hand to refugees standing at the border crossings. It was sincere help from the human hearts. For this, I am very thankful to you. Thank you for organizing help for people at train stations and bringing food. The exam was well passed by numerous entrepreneurs who, despite the terrible COVID losses, did all in their power to support our brothers and sisters. Field kitchens were created. Polish people donated warm clothes as well as blankets and sleeping bags. It was a great gift and respect of the Polish nation to war refugees from Ukraine. The world is grateful to you for these little acts which bring hope and shelter. In the last few days, I had the honor to attend the General Assembly at the United Nations in New York, together with the independent delegation of Ukrainian women to the United Nations. We attended the gatherings at the United Nations headquarters and appealed for peace. I also organized a parallel event, Young Change Makers, Future Moral Leaders with the Global Goal Spirit, during the NGO CSW Forum, assisting the 67th session on the Commission on the Status of Women. I organized this special event together with Svidlana Salamatova, President of Geopolitical Alliance of Women, Head of Independent Delegation of Ukrainian Women to United Nations, co-founder of NGO Institute of Cultural Affairs International Ukraine. I'm deeply grateful to the honorable guests who attended the Paral event and to all the honorable speakers. 
I would like to thank the speakers of Young Changemakers who inspire the audience from all over the world, both in New York and online. I would like to thank my dear Svetlana Salamatova from Kyiv, with whom I worked in the humanitarian field for years and organized together humanitarian aid. I would like to thank Jeremy Gilly, founder of Peace One Day, Alex Punyambabasi, advocate for landmine survivors and disability rights, Philip Matfin, diplomat and director of technology and international relations at the International Academic Competition, and the delegation of Ukrainian women to the United Nations. 20 Ukrainian leaders from different business, social and humanitarian fields. Together, we stand for peace. We as a global family said, never again, to war so many times in the past. In the 21st century, the number of wars and conflict had increased significantly. Landmass are still maiming, and killing children. In New York, together we discuss what we do and what needs to be done to support the young change makers, future leaders. We spoke about the key peace education. As an initiator of the One Mind, One Life global campaign and movement for a mind-free world, supported by humanitarian and the mining organizations from all over the world, I declared that I will campaign for an additional Sustainable Development Goal, Goal 18, a mind-free world. The gathered guests could listen to the Ukrainian delegation of 20 Ukrainian women. Many of them came from the heart of Ukraine. They traveled many days to come to New York. These women are prominent political figures in their cities, humanitarians, lawyers and businesswomen, but foremost, mothers and wives to men having to fight in the horrible war. They showed on screen horrific pictures of the war-torn Ukraine and the heavy suffering and human toll, especially on women and children. Global awareness about the situation in Ukraine is crucial. They came to the United Nations and NGO CSW Forum because they wanted to show to the world and advocate the humanitarian situation in Ukraine. In one year, Ukraine became the largest minefield in the world. Children from Ukraine are maimed and killed by landmines. 30% of Ukrainians need humanitarian aid. Special words of thanks were also addressed to the Polish people from the Ukrainian delegation. For many years, we advocate the situation in Ukraine. I feel very humble and privileged to be the head of Geopolitical Alliance of Women, initiated in Kyiv, Ukraine, together with these wonderful women. During the event, the other guests could see the hundreds of paintings of children from all over the world from the contest's children painting Peace on Earth, assisted by Peace Education, which I initiated a few years ago. It took us a few months to organize this event. After years, when coronavirus stopped our gatherings at the United Nations, we could finally attend the gatherings at the United Nations headquarters and attend NGO CSW Forum in person. We should never be afraid to appeal for peace call for peace. We must stop the war in Ukraine at all costs and also stop all conflicts in the world that are wreaking havoc. Innocent people die every day and anti-personal minds are laid every day, which murder innocent children playing near the houses. We say enough. Join us. Be a change maker. Together we can make this world a better place. A mind-free world needs to become a reality. We want to appeal for an additional sustainable development goal, a mind-free world. World without suffering, without children maimed and killed by landmines. Today, as we know, more than 60 million people across the globe woke up in a fear of being killed or injured by landmines. Help us to create a mind-free world.